today we have your tests only. So um, on your 200 number one, you have Safeway, Honda, and Mustang, okay? That's it. So uh, it starts in the middle. This is gonna be your test number one, 200 for five minutes, you all. All right. We are going to go back on the record now, but I want you to wait until I finish my questions before you start to answer, okay? Okay. All right, go ahead and say what you were going to say, please. Well, when he stepped up to me, I was doing an inspection on my car, and the only time I saw that he had a dent on his car was the time he parked it in the parking lot. Do you recall what color his car was? I think it was either black or dark blue. Do you know what year the car was? No, all I can tell you was that it was beat up. Do you remember the license number of this car? No, I didn't notice it. Did you get out of your car immediately after pulling into the parking lot? Yes, I did. Prior to the accident, did your vehicle have any damage to the front end of it? No, it didn't. Did you have any alterations done to your car prior to the accident? Yes, I had 20 inch rims put on it. Did the damage to your vehicle include any damage to the rims? Yes, it did. Was it just one rim or was it more than one? It was just one rim. After you pulled into the lot and stopped your car, did your passenger get out of the car also? No, she stayed in the car. While the two of you were sitting in the parking lot at Safeway, did she at any time get out of the car? I'm not sure. I don't recall. Before you got out of the car in the Safeway parking lot, did you have a conversation with your passenger? No, I didn't. Did you ask her if she was okay or if she was hurt? No, I didn't. Was anything at all said between the two of you before you got out of the car? No, I think she was in shock. Did the driver of the other car say anything to the passenger in your car? No. Now, you said it took about 30 minutes for the police to arrive. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And during that 30 minutes or so, what were you doing? I was standing by my car. What was the driver of the other car doing at that time? He was yelling at me and demanding to see my insurance information. All right. Did you show him your insurance information at any point? Yes, I did. Did he give you his insurance information at the same time? Yes, he did. Now, earlier you stated that the insurance papers he showed you were not for the vehicle he was driving. Is that correct? Yeah. He was driving a Honda, but the papers were for a different car. Do you recall what kind of car his insurance papers listed? I think it was a Mustang, but I'm not sure. Do you recall what kind of Honda he was driving? No, I don't recall. All I remember is that it was a two-door. Now, did he wait in his car or outside of his car for the police to arrive? He was outside of his car yelling at me. He was yelling at you for the entire 30 minutes before the police arrived? Yes. He was yelling at me and pacing around. When the police arrived, do you recall how many officers there were? Yes, there were two. Did you give a statement to either of the officers at that time? Yes, I did. Did either of the officers speak with the passenger in your car? If they did, I didn't notice. Did either of them ask you if you or your passenger needed any medical assistance at the scene of the accident? Yes, they asked me, but I told them that I didn't. Did an ambulance arrive at the scene of the accident? No. How long would you estimate that the two officers were at the scene? I don't know. They were busy making sure that me and the driver of the other car didn't cross paths. At any time, did you tell either of the officers that you felt threatened by the driver of the other car? Yes, I did. How did they respond when you told them that? They didn't say anything. Do you recall witnessing the other driver being taken into custody at the scene of the accident? I don't recall. Okay. At some point you left the scene, is that correct? Yes. After we exchanged the information and I talked to the police. When you left the scene, your passenger was also in your vehicle, is that correct? Yes, she was. Did she get out of the vehicle at any time while the officers were there at the scene? I don't think so. I don't recall if she did or not. Do you recall having a conversation with her about whether or not she was injured at that time? It wasn't until after I got back in the car and was about to leave that I asked her if she was okay. Do you recall what she said in answer to you asking her if she was okay? She said she was shaken up. 
Once you left the scene of the accident, where did you go? I went straight back to my house. At what point after the accident did you first feel that you might have been physically injured? After I got home and I calmed down, my muscles started to tighten up. Where did you notice the pain first? On my neck and my shoulder. It hurt to turn either way. What part of your neck was hurting the most? It was this part right here on the back of my neck. Is that the back on the left side or the right side or sort of in the middle? All of. Okay, and then we have your second test, 200 Q&A number two. You have Mary, Embassy, Mr. Camachos, and Roswell. And this will be test number two, one, 200 for five minutes, and it does start in the middle. Mary, can you describe that for me? She walked off the curb and walked into the middle of the street. The lady was driving. It was hard to tell because my windows are dark tinted. The lady was driving down the street. The girl just walked off into the middle of the street. The lady slowed down as much as she could. It looked to me like she walked into the car. It was hard to tell exactly where the car hit her and where she walked into it, but she did. After you noticed the girl either walking into the car or getting hit, what occurred? What then occurred? After she got hit and flipped over? Yes. She got up and kind of hobbled to the curb and sat down and started crying. Did you talk to the little girl? No. Did you get off your car and go over there? No, I should have. Obviously, the police took down your name. Did you stop somewhere? I went back, picked up my backpack, and went back over there, and I noticed the police were still there. I was going to call later on in the afternoon, but I noticed they were still there, so I went back and turned into the embassy and got out. And they thought I was just another concerned person, and they said the girl was fine. And I said, well, actually, I was behind the lady that was driving. So they took down my name then. I think earlier you indicated that you were not happy that the lady in front of you was driving slow. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Was this before the accident? Yes, sir. Do you have any idea how fast the lady was driving in front of you or how slow she was driving? The speed limit was 35. I believe she was going about 25 to 30. Prior to the accident, did you notice if the lady slowed down? You mean when she saw the little girl walking in the street? Yes. Yes, she slowed down. After you had gotten back from your house with the backpack, did you ever go and talk to the girl or any of the individuals? No, I haven't talked to any of them. I don't know what they look like. Do you know what happened to the other girl that was across the street? The one she was talking to? Right. No, I didn't see her either. When this girl that was in the accident got off the curb, did any of the other little girls or other girls that were there also get off the curb? They kind of stood there and watched when she got hit, and when she hobbled back to the curb is when they all surrounded her. What was the traffic like at the time of the morning? It gets pretty busy. It wasn't as busy as it usually was. It was kind of slow. There was another bus behind me and a couple other cars and some coming from the other direction also. So you actually saw the young girl get off the curb and walk towards the street? Yes, sir. How far did she walk before she actually made contact with the vehicle? I'd say at least three or four steps. So she didn't actually walk to the middle of the street, the center of the street? She was walking to the other side of the street. She was... Right, but what I'm saying is the contact, the impact did not occur in the middle of the street, but on the right side. No, it was on the side. Since this accident, have you talked to anybody else that might have been or seen this accident? No. Has anybody talked to you about this accident? Just that one man from the insurance, and then people have been calling me to set up this appointment and stuff like that. That's it. Before the young girl walked off the sidewalk, had you been watching her or watching the car in front of you? I was kind of watching both because I, too, noticed that the girl wasn't paying attention. So I was watching both to see what the ladies in the car reaction was going to be. Did you think she might be trying to cut in front of the traffic, the little girl? I don't think I understand your question. I'm asking about you. Were you concerned that the little girl might have 
come off the curb. Yeah, she looked like she was going to. Did you hang around the accident site long enough to notice that the bus driver got off the bus? No, I didn't know if he got off or not. He was directly behind me, but I don't know if he got off. Did the little girl appear to be seriously hurt? No. Is that why you went around? Yeah, that's why. I went to go pick up the backpack. Did you notice if the little girl was bleeding or anything like that? No. Like I said, she kind of hobbled to the curb. I didn't see any blood or anything else. Did she get up immediately or did it take some time? She got up immediately. Mary, you made a reference, and I understand Mr. Camacho's objection to the interview by the insurance company. Is that correct? Yes, sir. When was that? About a month or two ago. Maybe a month and a half. Did they call you on the telephone? He called me on the telephone and he went over to my house. Who was that? I don't recall his name. He was a man from Roswell, I believe. Did he give you a card? He did, but I don't know what I did with it. I understand. But the gentleman did, in fact, give you a card. Yes. Now, did this man take an oral statement or a recorded statement of you? Okay, we'll get ready for your 180s. And so you have on your 180 number one, Downey Street. You have Irving Feldman, Denver Place, Henry Rothstein, and Downey. And this will be 180 Q&A number one for five minutes. And it starts in the middle, you all. When you came over to the Downey Street door, you say there was already there a large crowd of girls. Yes. And you were sitting very near to the Downey Street door, weren't you? Yes. But these girls got to the door before you. Yes. Could you give the jury any idea of how many girls there were there? I can't say because there was a little part of a wall there and I couldn't see. Could you tell the jury whether there were 10 girls or 100 girls? The place was filled with girls, and I don't know how many were there. And you couldn't give us any idea between 10 and 100, could you? There were a great many there. The place was filled with them. Are you prepared to say to the jury that there were more than 10 girls there? A great deal more. I think even more than 50. Where do those girls come from? How can I know that? They came running from 542. Well... You sat within five or six girls of that door yourself, did you not? I was sitting in the first line from the window, and there were other lines. But you knew that there was trouble before there was any outcry, before you saw any flame, didn't you? I didn't know. Why didn't you tell the jury only yesterday that you saw a little smoke, and because you saw a little smoke, you spoke to Irving Feldman? Yes. What was the name of the young man that you spoke to? Irving Feldman. Now, is it true, is it not, that you did not hear of any trouble and did not know of any trouble until you saw a little smoke? Yes. When you saw the smoke, you already had your hat and coat? I just started to go out, and Feldman just looked out of the window to see whether there was a fire. Did you or did you not have your hat and coat when you saw the smoke? No. Where was your hat and coat at that time? in the small dressing room when I go away from the machine. That small dressing room is right near to the Downey Street door, is it not? Yes. And it is right near to the Downey Street elevator, isn't it? Yes. And when you saw the little smoke, you started right out for that dressing room, didn't you? Yes, sir. Did you get your hat and coat? Yes. At that time, you were right near the Downey Street elevators and the Downey Street door, weren't you? No, I couldn't get near it. Then instead of waiting at the door, you walked back to your machine, didn't you? No. You didn't go back to your machine at all? No. You are sure about that? Yes. Did you start to go to the Denver Place elevators then? Yes. You didn't go to the Denver Place elevators, did you? Yes, I did go. Are you sure about that? Yes. You are sure that from the Downey Street door, you went to the 540 Denver Place elevators? Yes. Was there a crowd at the Denver Place elevators? Yes, it was full there. Did you stand there? Yes. The elevator came up, didn't it? Not at that time. In about two minutes or five minutes, it came up. 
when it came up, you were crowded in with the rest, weren't you? Yes. When you were standing in front of the Denver Place elevators, were you in the middle of the crowd? Yes. There were people on either side of you, weren't there? Yes. Did you go anywhere else at that time? I went to the window and leaned out, but I saw there was no way of saving myself, and I went back. From the Denver Place elevators, you went to the window? Yes. Did you have to fight your way through the crowd to get to the window? Yes. And then when you came back, from the window, did you have to fight your way through the crowd again? Yes. In the meantime, were the girls all crying and shouting and generally excited? Yes. Now, have you told us every place that you went to that afternoon after you saw that there was fire? Yes. Are you sure about that? Yes. In answer to the questions that I have put to you this morning and leaving out what you said yesterday afternoon, I asked you whether you have told the jury this morning every place that you went to after you saw the smoke on the day of the fire. Yes, I can swear to it. I would like you to take as much time as you think you need and go over in your mind that whole shop and every place that you went to that afternoon after you saw the smoke in the shop. And tell us again whether you are sure that you told us this morning every place that you went to after you saw smoke in that factory. Yes, I can swear by my life. Which way did Henry Rothstein leave that shop? From his machine. I mean, on the day of the fire. Yes, the day of the fire and the time of the fire. Did you see Henry Rothstein go to the Downey? Okay, and so we have on your 180 number two, Durrell, James, Gaffey, Durrell, James, Gaffey, Heyman, Isaiah, Georgia, Belmont, and Christmas. It was from 2015. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And so we have, this will be your 180 number two Q&A, and it starts in the, in the beginning, you all, for five minutes. What is the name of your brother? Durrell. How do you spell that? D-U-R-R-E-L-L. -L. Does he have a middle name? James. Does he have the same last name you do? Yes. He goes by Gaffey? Yes. Is your dad his dad too? No, ma'am. He has a different father than you do? Yes, ma'am. But you and he have the same mother? Yes, ma'am. So your older brother's full name is Durrell James Gaffey? Yes, ma'am. How old is Durrell? He just turned 25. When did you start training with him? Last year. I'm not sure of the month or the date. But it was sometime in 2015, is that correct? Yes. Does Durrell have a regular workout program for you? Yes, ma'am. What is the program like? He will usually make us do push-ups and jump some rope, dumbbells. We do laps, and when we don't do that stuff, we play basketball on the days we don't do those. Does your brother Payman have the same workout routine as you do? Yes, ma'am. Does Payman work out with you and Durrell? Yes, ma'am. Does your brother Isaiah work out with you too? Yes, ma'am. Does he do the same workout routine that you do? Yes, ma'am. When your brother Durrell comes over, do you all work out together at the same time? Yes, ma'am. Do you remember how often Durrell was coming over in 2015 when you first started working out with him? Maybe about three times a week. Did he always come to the house at the same time? No, ma'am. Do you remember a general time that he would come to the house to work out with you? He would come over between 6.30 or 7.30. In the morning or at night? In the morning. How long did you and your brothers normally work out with Doral? About an hour and a half. When you worked out, did you keep any kind of record of it? I sort of did. Did you write about the workouts in your journal? Sometimes. Do you have a special name for the workout time with Durrell? I either call it basketball, if we do basketball that day, or I call it workout or exercise. Do you think you kept track of it in your journal? Yes, ma'am, I think so. But if you were to write it down, it would say workout or exercise or basketball? Yes, ma'am. Does that mean that sometimes, even though you did a workout, you called it basketball? No. My brother would make us do... We would have a workout day where we did all the jump ropes and push-ups and stuff. And then, like, the next time he came over, 
we'd do shots and play a basketball game with him. You talked about doing laps. What do you mean by that? He would make us run up and down our hill, which is the driveway, and then he would make us run five times around the house. You ran around the inside of the house? The outside of the house. So one lap would be completely around the outside of the house. Five laps on the outside of the house. When did you stop doing workouts with Darrell? I'm not really sure. Do you know why you stopped doing workouts with Darrell? Yes, ma'am. Can you tell me why that was? He went to Georgia. Do you know why Darrell went to Georgia? To see his friend. Where was Darrell living before he went to Georgia? He was here in Belmont. Do you know where in Belmont he was living? No, just in Belmont. That's all I know. Did you ever visit him at his home? No, ma'am, but we would drop him off there sometimes. Do you generally know where it was that he lived? No, ma'am. No, I don't. Do you remember when he went to Georgia? No, ma'am. I don't remember what day. Do you know if it would have been before Christmas of last year? It was after Christmas, ma'am. So wouldn't that mean that it was 2015? Yes, ma'am. So up until the time Darrell went to Georgia, you were working out with him at least three times a week. Yes. But you can't remember when you first started working out with him? No, ma'am. But you do remember that it was last year in 2015? Yes, ma'am. Do you remember if you were working out at all in 2014? Yes, ma'am. Does that mean you remember or you were working out in 2014? We were working out. What made Darrell start working out with you? He said he wanted to lose some weight, and then my mom would bring us in. She told him to come every morning and do a workout with us. Why do you think your mom wanted Darrell to work out with you? It's just to keep our exercise up and keep healthy. Okay, now going back to the accident on February 24th of 2014. You said that after the accident, you pulled the car off to the side of the road. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And then you went to a house where your father did something. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And then, okay, you all, that concludes your test. They were very fair. Hopefully you all get one. Have a great day, you all. And remember the speed building was prior to this. Um, this